Uh, Greg Abbott, groups. the Attorney General of Texas, who's now running for governor, uh, also happens to be a paraplegic. Now, some supporters of Wendy Davis, the likely Democratic nominee, are saying that it's up to him to show the medical records and actually prove that he needs to be in a wheelchair. Chris Bedford, is this campaigning at an all-time low, or internet commenters were blowing up to make a story out of? I mean, it's obvious <laughs> that he, it's obvious that he's faking his, his paralysis. I mean, what is a more convincing story? Like, it's like the Texas story, the paralyzed lawyer. I mean, that's what that's like the idea. It's John Wayne. It's that's a not a thing. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. What are you a Texas expert now? Yes. Well, I'm from Massachusetts, and that's what we think. I think this seems like uh, Wendy Davis's supporters grasping at straws, watching their candidates' story fall apart over the past few weeks, and now needing something to sort of fight back. And you have like people who are just lashing out. It's, it's like, my favorite. Going, after, going like, after a guy who's in a wheelchair and suggesting that he shouldn't be there because he's faking it. This, this could work. I mean, Texans do, they love late-term abortion, and they love cripple bashing. I mean, this could actually be a winning strategy. You should play to the crowd. Yeah, it's just playing to the crowd. It's yeah. like the grassroots battleground Texas. This is what they want. So here, do a bump and let's start this again. Yeah, let's do it from the top. No, no not no, that. Dude. It's all oh, sweet, Vince. The East Coast has been hammered by a blizzard and none have been harder hit than Congressman Trey Raydell. Woo! Yes, Zing. that's right. Uh, it turns out that he was busted in a federal sting for purchasing cocaine. And he went to rehab, came back, and now he's announced he's getting out of Congress. Yeah. Well, don't you think that Trey Rydell could have weathered this storm? Everybody in Congress who's running for Congress now, who's, who's in the Senate, there seems to be everybody who's doing it is, is sort of a, like a type A personality. They put these perfect lives. Mm -hmm. So boring. And it's, it's kind of, it's annoying. And it's, these people are always kind of creepy and weird. Everybody uh, in Congress does coke is what you're saying, right? No, I'm saying not enough people in Congress have these kind of vices that connect them with everyday Americans. Do you think there's not enough vices in Congress? Like everybody knows that like John Boehner is a fan of like his wine and his cigarettes. Uh, and that's kind of refreshing to still have, I think, in Those the American are both Congress. Legal. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying. Yeah, but the f aren't. Okay, Whatever. bottom line is Trey's a, Trey's a quitter. Yeah. He quit. He, he quit booze. He quit cocaine. Now he's quitting Congress, he, and he's not the kind of guy that you can count on to represent your little girl in D.C. I think he could have survived this. I think we look at that Congress and lawmakers are replete with examples of people who've overcome personal foibles. Uh, you had Ted Kennedy. You had <laughs> David David Bitter. I mean, you have yeah. people who have survived what would otherwise be career-ending. But not everyone survived. He's a member of the House, so he's up for re-election in November, yeah. and it, it's hard to overcome something well, like that. And it's hard a, to go to work a, a, every day when you don't have your uppers and downers. You know what? It it moved me to see this man come out here and to be reduced to, this cocaine addict to be reduced to going up and admitting that he's a member of Congress. Do I, we think that um, that it, something else is going to come out? I stole uh, that joke from a gym man. Like who he was doing coke with or why he was in DuPont? Yeah. Right. Oh. Damn. Damn. Okay, great, thanks.